Okay, welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. So this is uh, the Bare Bones Guide to Short Infantry, Part Two. And it's not also it's not all only Part Two of my video. It's also Take Two of my video. Because when I uh, originally did this, I did all the analytics for both the foot cavalry and the heavy infantry in one one go, and it was over thirty minutes. So. That's why I originally separated the two and made two and was intending to make two videos. So I published the first video and then I started working on this one. And as I started working on this one, I realized that there's really a lot more to say about foot cavalry than, than you would think. And so I wound up deciding to throw out the uh, analytical portion of it and just sort of redo it a little bit. It's, it's all still valid, but I wanted to, to, to change things around and add more things in. And so that's what you're going to see is you're going to see I put uh, a little bit more effort into it because as as the week went on i realized that there was a lot to say so as per normal here are some timestamps of uh where you're going to get to see things and uh and we'll start with unit characteristics we'll move on to traits and abilities my definitions uh the unit chart so those are all the same as the the same as the last video uh then i'm going to add into hero skills and tactics because there are different ones you can use uh, and then I'm going to show you uh, uh, using these tactics. We're using the Condorati, the Squires, the Arms, and Terrigs, and those not listed here. After that, I'm going to give you a little quick little conclusion. So this is the slide from the uh, other video um, that I put together, and you can see because I got the heavy infantry stuff still up there. And I thought, well, I'll just leave it up there because you can you can you can compare the the differences between the two as as uh, I had originally intended. So a hit and run unit or a foot cavalry unit, as I'm going to call it as from here on in you know uh the traits are basically fast movement speed compared to the heavy infantry usual slow movement speed they have uh tighter formations so they're easier to mover they have a higher damage rating uh mediocre defenses uh passive active abilities that encourage multiple charges short charge cooldown passive abilities that make it easier to get out of combat and bonus charge damage. Now, obviously, these are not all-encompassing uh, traits. A unit might have some of these, or you know, one or two of these. Uh, for example, uh, Terex have a fast movement speed, but the charge cooldown is is horrible, which is why I, I put the uh, the doctor on them to to lower that. So these are not uh, all-encompassing, but they do show what traits uh, that these units do have or can have, right? Um, so now take a look at the abilities and and and, and uh, skills that they have so obviously they should have at least a speed of 44. Uh, one of the skills is assault troops so they'll do more damage in this in the charge this is like squires have this melee masters more damage in the melee and melee fighters it's actually slightly different uh, and then you get things like um, prefecture drill shock attack or some other damage ability and again squires have this in their veteran tree it's called unwavering it gives them an extra eight percent per per uh, point uh, that they get in the melee for a certain amount of time, right? And then again, they, they, they should have tight formations. Now, not all of them don't. Like Squires, for example, is very difficult to use, even though they have some great abilities, but they're very difficult to use because they have that wide formation. Now, to me, a foot cav unit should have both wide and narrow formations, right? Narrow so you can maneuver them wide so that you can uh, hit more bots if that's what you need to do, right? But these are the, some of their abilities brings us into the next thing which is what is the definition that I, I, I came up with so I, I came up with a, a fast moving infantry unit that does more damage in the charge than in the general melee although they can have melee fighting abilities their charge is more important they have the capability to break contact and a fast enough charge cooldown to recharge in a reasonable time now obviously not all units meet all of that definition uh, but the good ones do right and so what are those units that I've uh, picked out? So obviously you can see that we've got uh, Maidens right at the top. Uh, and this is the same same uh, build as, as the Heavy Infantry, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Uh, and then you can see the Men at Arms attack build. And you can see that their attack rating is 120. And you can see that their health is 10,000. And then and the Terrigs can also see are 120 and their health is 12,000. But if you go down the... Uh, the the defensive lines, like the piercing defense, the, the, the slashing defense, you'll notice that only the 
um, maidens and the men at arms have decent armor, right? Everyone else is all pretty me mediocre. Now, another unit that's not in here is Sons of Fenrir, and that's because mine are level six, and uh, I just don't like the unit. Uh, so I haven't played it, so I can't really give you any good um, advice on it. Uh, but it is it is definitely a, a foot cav unit, right? Um, also, my Prefecture Guards are only level 12. Uh, there is max points in the Squires unit tree and my Ironcap Sword unit tree, so you got to take that into account as well. So by max points, I mean uh, I put Honor into the unit tree, which is actually quite easy for this level of unit. Uh, so the Grey Hair Garrisons are, are, are in here, and this is not the Immortal line. This is the Linwu Veterans line, I believe. So they have slightly less health, but even then, their, their attack uh, reading doesn't go up that, that high right um you know it doesn't hit 120 but they're still a, a good unit um now the condies you'll notice now and this is where i think you know uh, is important their attack rating is 120 and if you'll notice that a lot of these units like even squires even with their attack rating 114 you'll notice that their damage rating is right up there with um you know the maidens and other heavy units so they still retain a good damage now what's their swing speed i don't know who you know it's not you're not going to be able to find that out um but their damage is right up there so what that means is if you go toe to toe with a heavy infantry unit of your of let's say let's say condies going toe to toe with uh let's say uh, paladins uh you're going to lose in the general melee if you go at each other head on right because they have more armor and you don't now if and this is how you should be playing them you hit them in the back or the rear and this is any heavy infantry unit you're going to do just as much damage as they are for the few seconds that you get that you're in the rear right when they turn around and start smacking at you that's when it's time to get out and i'll i'll, I'll go over that in a bit but this this slide if you remember the older slide and compare it to it this slide shows you that your damage output is pretty much the same. It's your armor and your health that, that starts to fall. Like, um, like Condes only have 9,000 health, right? And, and um, you know, most heavy infantry units have 10,000 or better, right? So that's what you have to look at. Now, uh, iron, iron cap swordsmen are, are pretty decent. Like I, like, I use them as a filler unit. Oh, I've got 110 points or 15 points. What can I throw in there? And I find that the iron swords are, are pretty decent, you know, uh, for what they are. And now, granted, they, they don't have any tight formations or anything like that. They do go to column formation. But if you just need to throw a unit at something, I find that these guys are good. And they have that fast recharge ability. So that's good, too. Now, speaking of abilities, and I just want to just pull this up real quick and show you. Like, um, a lot of these foot cab units seem to have these little things either in the unit tree or uh in an actual ability and you know it's like right here we have assault troops and that's more melee more sorry more damage in the charge but also look at this unwavering thing right that gives you more damage in the melee after the charge for a certain amount of time right and and other units like condes have shock attack and and prefecture guards have uh prefecture drill right so these these things um because your uh foot cav do have that faster movement speed it means that you can play something other than longsword with them. And now that's that's me. Like I generally play longsword with heavy infantry because I want to stay alive long enough to give the unit orders. But with foot cab that is natural a little faster, you know, and has other little abilities like this, you can use other weapons. And and so there, um, let's let's go over those other weapons and, and how they would work with a foot cab unit. We talk about those other weapons we have to talk about uh what abilities we're going to take with those weapons and when we do that we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions and one of them is do you play your hero to support your unit or do you play your unit to support your hero and this is a very important question because it does directly affect what skills you're going to take with your hero now if now, if you've watched my videos long enough, you know what category I sit in. And basically, I sit in the, I play my hero to support my unit. And so, 
when I, when when I do that, all my skills are basic, basically taken in whatever weapon I'm using uh, to give that support. So, for example, with longsword and shield, I'm taking mercy of heaven every time and knightly vows. And uh, with the with the glaive, well, I'll, I'll get into those in a minute. But the other thing that I do, because I like to play my unit as the main function rather than my hero, I play my like I, I made my armor for that as well and so with my armor you're going to see that I went all leadership right I, I added I, I sat there and made armor and armor and armor until I had enough leadership now I'm, I'm still two points shy of where I want to be I've got a lot of builds that need two more points of leadership and I think I've built like you know 80 pairs of boots trying to get another two points but but basically so I'm a little bit more fragile than a heavy guy should be because instead of looking for like extra armor or extra crit defense or anything like that, you'll notice that I instead went all leadership. And uh, so now that's that's basically my 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 armor, my 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 theory on uh, you know are you playing your hero? Or are you playing your unit? So now let's talk about skills that I'm going to take with the three weapons that I use. And so obviously I use long sword and shield, I use glaive, and I use uh, short sword and shield. And they all have a different uh, benefit, but only glaive and long sword directly buff the unit. And this is why I said, you know, take a look at that unwavering and, and, and uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Same with prefecture drill and, and um, like similar abilities, because the glaive gives you with God of Battles that extra um, buff to, to, to uh, attack power, right? So here are my skills that I use and and you're going to notice that I try to keep uh, like skills on the same key bindings so like I use uh, Q for my buff so in the long sword it's got knightly vows and in the glaive it's got god of battles and I also use Q when I when I'm doing it for the shield bash so the shield bash for both long sword and short sword is going to always be in Q and then E is always going to be a, a, a closure so like a charge uh for glaive and uh short sword whereas obviously with the long sword my charge is the ultimate so i gotta put something else there and then r is obviously some sort of a combat ability whether it's arc of steel or warlord's greeting and uh with with the long sword it's it's obviously uh mercy of heaven now um you'll notice that 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 uh, the the long sword is a little bit different from the other two and that's just because I've been playing it that way so long that I didn't want to risk switching the keys on myself but um, these 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 are the skills I use and and, and the reason um, tactically when you're using them you have to ask yourself a couple questions again like with long sword when you're using long sword you have to ask yourself am I going to use these skills getting in or getting out and I'm going to show that in a bit Right. Do I use char the, the, the Clash of Shields to get my unit out or do I use it as I'm charging in? Uh, and that's that's important. Same with Nightly Vows. I'm going to use Nightly Vows to get in or I'm going to use Nightly Vows to get out. And those questions are asked of yourself as you look at the tactical situation in the split second you have to decide. Am I going to charge with Nightly Vows or am I going to hold it to get out of there? And that all depends on what's sitting in front of you. Right. So that's, that's why... Um, it's it's those questions that you ask as the situation develops not i'm going to go in i'm always going to use it to get out because you can't ask ask yourself that you have to ask yourself that as you're sitting staring down at your target now as you're using glaive if you switch to glaive you have a, a different choice it's do i want to use god of battles for the charge damage or the melee damage and that's why i said remember that unwa unwavering and the prefecture drill in your back of your mind because and the shock attack because i charge in and i have the god of battles going on or do i charge in hit shock attack and then hit god of battles or god of battles and shock attack you know what i mean so that's that's also important which which one do i want to use it for do i want to use it for the charge or for the follow-up and so that's that's important uh for the glaive uh, the last weapon i use is is the short sword and the short sword is is unique compared to the other two because it doesn't have any buffs for your unit, right? So, but what it does have is is um, abilities that help you defeat a unit better as well, right? So let's talk about Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck, you know, are you going to use it 
again to get in or get out or to take a wall down or to 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 really enhance your charge in the sense that um, you charge in your you hit thunderstruck it knocks a unit down and just as that unit gets knocked down your charge arrives right and if you time it right you can do that you can literally take a wall down doing exactly that and i'm sure you've experienced guys doing that to you and so that's that's the three different weapon styles that you can play with your um uh, foot cavalry now the thing to, to keep in mind though is that the only one that can get you in and out quicker is the long sword the other two don't right and the, and it's obvious because of nightly vows because the 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 glaive can give you um better damage whether when you hit or in your um uh shock attack or follow up or anything like that the glaive can add that better damage but it can't get you out right uh it can't get you out at all in fact so you either have to, you have to hit and, and retreat immediately before they get a chance to tie you up or you're in it to win it whether you like it or not right so that's the glaive now uh the short sword can get you out because if you save your thunderstruck for after the hit after the contact uh you can basically uh get your guys out thunderstruck and, and you're still running right you can even use your, your your charge to get yourself out and what i tend to do uh when i when i when i do something like this whether it's whether it's it's with a long sword or whether it's with the short sword is as i as i make contact uh, whether I'm waiting the, the extra 10 seconds or something so the squires can get their bonus damage or whatever, uh, I'm already turning to look behind me to see where I'm going to get out. And one of the things I usually do is I just select a supply point in the rear and I tell them to go that way, right? And then when I'm using a uh, longsword, I'll, 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 I'll hit nightly vows as they run by me and then I'll clash your shields into the enemy unit just so that I can get a few more guys free and then I'm like sprinting booking it as well and you can do the sort of the same thing with everything else except that obviously you can't you can't you know clash of shields with the with the glaive to, to help your guys get out but you can arc of steel and you can use you know hail of blades and that'll kind of help you but not too much and then of course at the end of that you use your glaive charge to get yourself out right and of course with iron sides it's you you drop that that thunderstruck assuming you haven't used it when you got in so those are those are choices those are tactical choices that that you can you can make now personally i found i find that the long sword is the better all around uh weapon to use to support your unit now that's obviously just me if you're a if you're a glaive guy or a short sword guy and you've you've got a super handle on that uh, on that weapon you can obviously make it work but but for me i find that because of nightly vows because of clash of shield i can get in and i can get out and and it's it's a good it's a good general purpose weapon now obviously your personal damage is is not going to be great uh but your personal survivability is so let's uh, let's look at some video examples okay so here we are in uh Limu Fortress, and you can see I'm starting with uh, Condorati's. And as as with foot cav, one of the things you have to you have to keep in the back of your mind is that how often, like how many times do you want to use them, right? Are you going to throw them away, or are you going to try and use them a lot? Now, with with a uh, heavy infantry, and you don't really have that choice. You're, when you commit them, usually they're committed. Uh, very rarely do you get a chance to throw them out. Or to get the out, sorry. But with a with a condi unit, you do have that ability. Now, also, you can see I'm always looking at them. I'm looking for the flank shot, right? So I'm coming in here, and I'm looking for that flank shot. So I, that's why I went all the way around. So these guys don't even know I'm there. Charge. And I even get a hero kill out of it. Two hero kills out of it. So, the the temptation is to just charge in right away. And you'll think, oh, I'll get more kills if I'm charging, if I'm always getting in there. But one of the things I found is is patience is a virtue in the sense that if you look around and you wait, even though let's say the battle's going on hard, you know, there's only so many bots that can fit in the spot, right? So if but if you sit around and you wait and you 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 look for that that good charge, you know, usually it'll come. Like some some matches, you're on a failed team and everything just goes to shit. But but usually if you're wandering around looking for those good charges you'll get them right so have the patience to wait for them and and that's why the these uh 
Connies are so good. They're fast. They have a narrow. Now notice what I did here. I used my char my, my class of shields to get in. And I did that because it's a, it was a braced unit, right? So I, I wanted to do that. I got in. The, um, the friendly units at the point saw what I did and they came down as well. So I got in and now I'm going to get out. And I'm going to go and, and get the heal. And, uh, that, and that'll be that. So the thing is, like I said, the, the key takeaway there is I used my class of shields to get in. I did that because uh, they were braced. Now you'll also notice that I, I clicked on the supply points to move them around. And, and that, that does work quite well as well. So so here I am again. I'm going back in. And I decide I'm going to come up the other side now. And I like the fact that like you can just park them on corners, right? Again, I'm moving along the wall. Look at this this grape shot. It's going to become important later. It's actually going to be pretty funny. So I'm going to do a charge in and out on this one. right? I'm going to charge and I'm going to get out. So I don't use my Clash of Shields to get in. But I do use Nightly Vows. And I do that because I've got so many seconds. So now watch. I go, I look for the, the point. They're getting out. I Clash of Shields and they're gone and they still got a little bit of, they still had a little bit if you look a little bit of nightly vows to, to help boost them out right so that's basically an in and out kind of thing now i'm coming back and the, the point is falling so at this point i make a decision to just throw the unit away i'm down to about 50 percent but uh this poor bastard i this is hilarious didn't even see it coming a little bit of shock attack you're dead <laughs> I, I just did that for the walls to be honest and then I just charge Nightly Vows, and I don't go with them. I'm not. Com I'm, they're not coming back. I'm switching to my next unit. I just let them die. I, I press V, let them do their thing. So I go get my next unit. Now, Squires, I have a love-hate relationship with. I love the capability, I love the abilities, and I love their damage output. But I hate, and I absolutely hate, their, their formation choices. Because you don't have a narrow formation. And to be a good foot cab unit, you need that narrow formation so you can stick them in places and, and maneuver them through areas. And you're going to see, that you're gonna see how they, they don't uh, measure up when it comes to the formations. Now, it's, 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 it's like the, um, like the Greyhead Garrison in reverse. The Greyhead Garrisons have narrow formations that make Follow them easy to maneuver, but sometimes you do need that wide formation. And when you're a Greyhead Garrison unit, you're, you know, you can charge and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, you, they're more of a stand firm unit, right? Like they're more of a, like you get in and then you, 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 you brace, right? And it's too easy to flank a Greyhead Garrison unit. And I do like using them, like I said, but they're, they're better on, uh, narrow areas like, like a staircase. Right, so I come up here, and uh, I bring the unit up, and I fight this guy. <clears throat> what, what I was really going for was that archer unit on the left, but I wound up having to fight this dude. Now, they just they just run away. I don't know why the hell they didn't stay and, and wipe out my squires, but they didn't. So, uh, I turn to go after that archer unit, and again, you'll see that it's very difficult to get down the stairs at well. Right, so... They're coming. <laughs> but it's difficult. So then I charge. And it's a throwaway charge again, even though I go with him this time. But you notice I, I didn't use Nightly Vows in the charge. I probably should have. But I get in. I decide I'm going to throw him away. So I push him forward. I use my Clash of Shields. But I decide I'm going to... I'm going to in it to win it with a Squire unit. Because I know I've got one more unit. Now I had intended to go flank around, but I saw this unit sitting here, so I come in and I charge it. I put him up here for a second, and I decide that I really don't want to be in it to it with these guys, so I decide I'm going to hold myself and send them back. So they go back, but I'm going to hold, and I die. But I left this in for a reason. You'll note that 
um, if you press B, they're gonna they're gonna run away. But because I knew they were on the point and they were getting heals, but it's not just because of the heals. I knew that it, because they were safe on the point, that if I just let them time out, they would just disappear on their own, right? They wouldn't they wouldn't run away and, and maybe go through someone. So this guy is is watching my guys on the point, and they're just gonna disappear. They're not gonna run off, right? Now, obviously, you can see this is actually the starting point, but that's one of the things you can do. If you've got them going back to a point, and you know they're safe, and you're not sure where their pathing is to go to the to the, to the the release point, I guess is the best way to describe it, leave them on the point, because they'll just, they'll, just, um, they'll just disappear on their own. So now, um, this ne I'm waiting for the guy to pop up. Now, this next uh, run with the men-at-arms, this is really showcases how uh, the formations are really really well used so I'm gonna again I'm going for the flank and you can see that we're running out of time so I want to use them quickly and oh I don't want them around the corner so I put them back there and they can they can just tuck right there and so I just sit here and I'm watching the fight and I decide I'm gonna go for the pavis on top because if you can wipe out a pavis unit that's that's always a plus right so I come around the corner And I make the charge. Knightly vows to give him that extra penetration. I took a cannon hit there, but that's fine. And then I hit cover me, and now I'm in on this police unit. And if you lose a, a men at arms to kill a police unit, you've done you've done a good job. Now these paladins right here, they they start to go, and I want to hit him in the back, but I see that that archer unit, and I decide I'm going to go for that archer unit instead. So, like I said, the timing's down to 20 seconds, so I'm like, well. Screw it. Let's go in there and do it. It's it's a it's an in and it kind of thing, but um, I'd rather do that and at the last point get those extra kills, right? But you can see, you know, where I used um, my class of shields and my knightly vows, right? Like to get in or to get out, right? So I would use it sometimes to get in, and I would use it sometimes to get out, and uh, I'm MVP. And and you, you 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 almost don't like how did you get MVP because you know you're you're almost throwing these units away right like normally I I won't use squires like I usually don't have squires in my build I'll, I'll if I'm gonna have a, a blue unit I'll take Condies and then I'll I, I can usually get away with taking three purple units actually three purple charge units uh, so I generally don't use squires but you'll find that if you get one or two good charges with your 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 units you know and you just go pull the next unit that's enough to to get the the um, the points you need, right? So now, again, I've got the Terrigs here. And the Terrigs are a foot cab unit, but they have a horrible, horrible charge cooldown, which is why I put the charge uh, doctrine in them. Now, more so with Terrigs than with any other charge unit, it's really necessary to pick your charges. So you really need to be even more patient with Terrigs. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I wouldn't normally go up here uh, if, if, it was, if it wasn't so clear, right? And again, I decided, well, it's not clear enough, so I, I pull back. I had originally gone up there because I knew I can beat those little village watchmen with just, I don't need to charge them. I can just drop the unit on top of it and let the guys kill it. But when those two heroes showed up, I'm like, you know what? I, I kind of don't want to do that. So I wait. I wait for these guys, too. I don't want the wall. I don't want to take that on. That's a That would be a mistake. But I do want to take these guys on. And I know because I can get out the other way, right? I can I can get a quick little charge in, and I can get out the other way. Right, so I gather the guys up, and I'm gone. And, oh, they took our point. So now i got to go get the damn point. But usually I would have been, you know, I would have gone in, and I would have told them to go that way, and they would have moved their own way out, right? But this guy ninja in and took the point, so now i got to take it back. Thank you for taking that grenade. So again, it's all about patience, right? I'm looking for that perfect charge, and I know it's it, you know you you want to get in and you want to you want to do damage immediately, but your damage is the charge, so you may as well use it right. And charging into a flank or the back is the best way, preferably the back. And I used the Mentley Vows to get in because I want that charge to really hit. Close up. Attack at will. 
And I'm getting better. Close up! Close up! Close up! And Close point the Spy Depot. Tell him to go. So another good thing about these Terrigs is that they do blunt damage. And if you notice, looking at all of the, the charts I put up, very few units have any kind of blunt resistance, right? Unfortunately, here i got to do a, an initonic kind of thing. But I know that they're just rattan, so they've got crap armor. So I'll just beat the crap out of them anyway. Now I'm just getting my heels. B is falling. I have no intention of going back in there, although I do look at it. I think I look at it really quickly. But I know that it's, it, it would be a mistake to try and get back in there, even though I do take a quick look to see if maybe I can get that final throwaway charge in. But in the end, I decide not to do that. He takes off. <laughs> no kidnapping me, bitch. Uh, so, I decide it's time to get away. Because knowing when not to charge is, is a good thing. Like, I would get, I would have got very poor return if I'd gone in there. So, I'm moving on to the next stage of the fight here. I don't generally don't like doing frontal charges. So you notice right there, I use Clash of Shields to get the unit out. All right, knocked them all down, pulled them out, gave them a little heal, move around to the other side. And then that's that's really necessary to, to really decide on the fly what are you going to do? Are you going to get in or are you going to get out? And it, it keeps your unit viable a lot longer than it would be normally, right? Now the charge isn't up, so I just got to put them on top. And and again, I, I figure I can get away with that. Because I'm coming in from the back, there's only a few of them left. There's no real reason. Now, I, I, when I first saw these guys, I thought they were uh, enemy Iron Reapers, so I pulled away and tried to get around them. But then when I came up there, I realized they were ours. But just in that split second, I saw the maces. I back, I boogied out of there, right? And then you realize, oh wait, there are Iron Reapers. So I, I said, okay, well I'll just hang here then. But sometimes, like I said, sometimes like some people with some skins on them, uh, I can't even tell. Um, you know, it takes a minute, to, uh, a second to really look and, and, and see, you know, if they're friendly or not, right? So I think this is my throwaway charge. I said, fuck it. And they go. I believe I try to pull them out a little bit, but I'm not really too concerned. Because at this point I still have men at arms, I still got condies. What do they have there? I know I've got men at arms anyway. I've got men at, I've got other units that I'm gonna pull, so I, I don't mind like at this point throwing away a unit. These guys did a lot of damage. They they did a lot of work. Um, there's eight left, and eight if you use them right, I can still do a bit of damage if you get them in the back, but. At this point, I, I know I, I would be thinking, well, how, where can I throw them away? Close up. Close up. But this is where I, I think I make a mistake here. Um, Close up. Yeah, I go to throw I go to throw them into that back, and then that musket guy knocks me down and charges with his freaking village watchman. So that's the end of that. So one thing I, 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 sh I should mention, and you probably know this already, but if you see a musket guarding a unit, a musket player... Don't charge the unit unless you have absolutely no other choice. Because they do have caltrops, they do have that big fricked off grenade, and they can absolutely, you know, knock you down, right? Like, they can stop the charge cold. So, even though you might see, like, this this beautiful setup of, of archers sitting there waiting to, to, to be charged, if there's a musket unit or musket player in front of it, odds are you're not going to get in.
So that brings us to the end of the uh, foot cab video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you made it this far. Uh, uh, I hope I hope this um, either confirms what you already know or tells you a few things you you don't know. I had actually made a lot of footage for this, and then you know you realize, wow, I'm already at 30 minutes. So I sort of cut. I decided to throw out all of that footage and just use the uh, one of the good matches I had because it sort of had everything in it. And it showed you, like, from, you know, how I play for the entire match, not just for a, a tactical situation. You know, like, because you're making the decision, well, I've, I've got, like, you know, 40% of this unit, throw it away, pull the next one, and I can still get all the kills I need, right? So, um, but but tactically, I, I, um, I hope this helps uh, um, clarify, you know, different styles. Now, I, I only use the longbow, or the longbow, <laughs> I only use the longsword, uh, because that's i just i'm just so used to using it now uh that um you know i used to use the glaive quite a bit actually for for this because i really like that god of battles but i found for sheer um supporting your unit i mean nightly vows mercy of heaven and class of shield that's three abilities to support your unit whereas the glaive you really only get one right and iron sides you really or iron sides short sword you really only get one right which is thunderstruck so if you're doing like a rapid foot cav type thing you know those other two uh, weapons are viable but i think at the end of the day like long sword and shield is is the go-to one just because of of all the capability it adds to your unit uh, maneuverability wise uh you know getting in getting out wise so um, thanks for watching the video and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.